tell me, as these championships are happening, you're winning the Stanley Cup, how does the end of this run happen in Edmonton for you? Oh, unfortunately, because of business. Um, we won our fourth Stanley Cup. Um, it's kind of euphoria, obviously. I remember we got back to my apartment around 3.30 or 4 in the morning. Um, that time, my fiance and my dad and my mom and a couple of friends. My mom was cooking bacon and eggs, and we were having some champagne and orange juice. And my dad said to me, you know, the Oilers are going to trade you. And I remember thinking, oh, come on. My dad doesn't drink. And I remember thinking, wow, where is this coming from? <laughs> uh, and he goes, I didn't want to tell you this has been going on for a little bit. And I was like, wow, OK. The, sort of the rest is history. What is kind of unknown to people is that Peter and I sat down to try to negotiate a deal, because I was going to be an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. You're talking about Peter Pockington, yeah. the owner of the Oilers. And so it was a business decision. I decided not to resign. And he said, I can't let you not resign. I got to trade you. But you can decide wherever you want to go. So we narrowed down to four teams. It was, uh, I think, Philadelphia, New York, LA, and Detroit. Became between Detroit and LA. Anyone involved in a committed relationship who wants to have a family knows that changes and change are brought about by marriage. But I ask you to view this trade the same way Wayne asked me to view his request to be traded. Your move to L.A. will not only be a tremendous boost to hockey in that city, but in the entire United States. I'm disappointed about having to leave Edmonton. I truly admire all the fans and respect everyone over the years. I promise mess I wouldn't do this. But um, as I said, there comes a time when, when uh, uh, the ironic thing is that people don't know is that Janet said, you should go play in Detroit, and it was my dad who chose L.A. He said, for whatever reason, I think you should play in L.A. And I ended up at L.A. King, who's my dad. It wasn't my wife. Yeah, and then I think that that's, that's a sticking point with you, and I'm sure with Janet, because... No, it doesn't bother Janet. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, is this wrong, though, to say that Peter Pocklington, the owner, the first man to speak at that press conference, is kind of speaking in half-truths there? I mean, yes, at, at the end of the process, you wanted to be traded, but it's because the business wasn't working yeah. out. He, well, he couldn't sign you, yeah. and it seemed like he pinned it all on Janet and marriage that you're going to L.A. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Um, but I, Which I, made Janet she was public fair. enemy number one in Edmonton. <laughs> or Canada. Number two. Or North America, yeah. <laughs> number two. Um, you know, as I said to Peter, I have a year to go. I'm not going to leave, but I'll give you an opportunity to match any offer that's out there. So if, in those days, the highest paid player was making a million dollars. And the year we won the cup that year, I was making 600,000 Canadian. I just said, you know, I'm a salary cap for our team. And I need to not only treat this like a business for Wayne Gretzky, but I got to make Messier more money. I got to make Anderson more money, Fear more money. I was a built-in salary cap, and I... Just, because nobody on the team's going to make more than you. Yeah, and they all knew that, and Peter knew that, and I knew that. So all I said was, and when he told me that wasn't going to happen, I said, okay, I think it's best we need to do this, because I won't re-sign wherever you trade me, because if you trade me, I'll leave after a year. So it had to be a mutual agreement. And I, I understood why he traded me. Um, I didn't like it. Uh, people always ask me, how many cups would you have won in Edmonton? You know, maybe we wouldn't have won one more. I don't know. But I know one thing, it was a pretty damn good team. You come